Hi, my name is Dr. Tibor Lazar. I'm the owner and surgeon of Lazar Veterinary Surgery. I'm now going to talk about patella luxation. Patella refers to the kneecap in the dog and cat. Usually we see a condition called medial patella luxation. Medial refers to the kneecap popping towards the inside, uh, but rarely we see a uh, condition called lateral patella luxation where it pops towards the outside. We commonly abbreviate medial patella luxation as MPL and lateral as LPL. So you may hear some of those terms. Uh, I do want to show uh, several illustrations to hopefully drive the point uh, across a little bit better than just me here talking. Uh, and I do want to thank Webster Veterinary Supply for allowing me to show the images on their DIA app for the uh, iPad, which is really an amazing uh, illustration, I think. So to begin, on the right we have uh, the normal alignment of the knee. This is with the kneecap or patella sitting right in the middle of a groove called the trochlear groove. Up above it's attached to the quadriceps muscles and then down below it's attached to the patellar ligament which then connects to a part of the bone here called the tibial tuberosity and that's the normal situation. When we see MPL in uh, dogs very commonly this is the situation where the patella is out of the groove and it tends to be a problem with the anatomy in some small breed dogs um, miniature poodles, chihuahuas, several smaller breeds they're born with this condition where there's a twist uh, at the bone above and below and the end result is that it has a tendency to pull the kneecap towards the inside so it's not unusual to see this develop in five six month old dog and as time goes on, very commonly, the severity will worsen. We grade patella luxations on a scale from one to four, one being the least severe, four being the most severe. Uh, as far as a dog actually limping because of it, it's variable. We'll sometimes see a dog with even a grade one luxation having episodes of lameness. The classic description for the type of a limp we see is a dog is walking along and suddenly will hold up the leg for perhaps just even a step or two and then put it back down and act as if nothing ever happened. Usually not a painful uh, condition, but it can be, especially if there is a traumatic form of it. Uh, when we get to the more severe grade four luxations, uh, some of these dogs will be walking just very abnormally with every step that they take and, and that's a somewhat of a different situation. Let me uh, now show a video here I may run this a couple of times. Actually, let me start from the beginning. So what we're seeing here is just the typical movement of the knee where the patella is sitting in the middle of the trochlear groove and the knee is bending. So obviously that's the normal situation. And now I want to show a video that talks about patella repair. I'll pause this at different points to get uh, the point across. Um, and actually before I even get that far, so clearly surgical repair is why you're watching this. It's what we recommend, especially if there's a limp involved, especially if there's lameness. But also the um, patella has a protective effect to the front of the joint. When the patella pops out of the groove, it puts the structures, in particular the cruciate ligament, at risk of tearing. And so um, a very common reason to have the surgery performed is as a preventative surgery before we see arthritis develop, before we see a lot of joint destruction, and before we see the ligaments uh, inside of the joint tearing. And very commonly in the smaller breeds, we will repair both legs at the same time. I won't go into a lot of detail with that on this video, but if that is the case for your pet, we'll be talking about that um, during the consultation. So. We'll resume play here. So we're pointing out again the patella, the trochlear groove is where the groove that the patella is sitting. Of course the model is not showing this other soft tissue structures around the joint that also serve to stabilize the kneecap. So here is the situation of a medial patella luxation. Now the first step that we do in the surgery is approach the joint. We see the middle of the joint. We can evaluate the cruciate ligaments, the meniscus. Um, 
What we want to do is preserve that cartilage. So we take out a wedge of cartilage, including the underlying bone, and then we will shave off the bone on both ends and put the cartilage back. Uh, it will just heal in place on its own. The net effect is that it's a much deeper groove, especially for a young dog that has had this condition uh, since it was born. Very commonly, the groove will be quite flat, and so that step is essential to get the patella to stay in place. Now this is something we will most likely be talking about doing in your dog. This is called a tibial tuberosity advancement. The tuberosity again serves as the attachment from the patella on down to the tibia. If the alignment is off, if, if the structure is not in a straight line, very commonly it is towards the inside of the joint and if we do not do this step of moving the attachment, then over time the pull of the ligament may cause the patella to come out again. So this step, while it seems dramatic, we're actually cutting a fairly small part of the bone and then we secure it in place with actually two different pins. This model shows one, but uh, these Kirshner wires, commonly referred to as pins, should stay in for life. It's actually quite rare that we have to remove it, but when we get into complications, that's one of the things to always consider that it could come out of place. Um, so that's pretty much the procedure. We have the two main steps and then the fine-tuning steps are adjusting the soft tissues. If the kneecap has a tendency to pop towards the inside, the medial direction, we will do what's called imbrication or tighten up the tissues on the outside. Obviously if it's popping towards the outside or laterally, then the imbrication will occur on the inside or medially. So getting into complications, potential complications, I've already alluded to the implants. Any implant that is placed, we have to worry that it may have to come out at some point. The risk is quite low. Fewer than 1% of dogs will have the implants removed at some point in their life. As long as it's in place for six weeks after surgery, that's the only critical time period. By that point, the bone is already starting to heal in place and we do not have to place a new implant in there. I've seen implants come out years later for unknown reasons, but if you see that your dog starts to limp or you might actually feel uh, a little bump where uh, the area is by the knee, then you recheck with your family veterinarian on exam and certainly on an x-ray we would have an idea whether the implants have moved. If it has, it's a very easy matter to take out. We just make a very small incision in the skin, sometimes with just a local block, and remove the pin. Other complications for the surgery, infection is a concern for any orthopedic uh, surgery, but the risk there is quite low. The biggest complication, what we consider a major complication, is that the kneecap could pop out during the recovery. Initially, the stitches are holding it in place, and it takes a good six weeks before we really have a, a firm fibrous tissue or scar tissue that helps to lock uh, the kneecap in its normal position. So it's critical that we follow the activity restrictions that I'll get to in a few moments. If the patella does reluxate, unfortunately it very commonly means having to redo the surgery, although we don't redo all the steps. It's really a matter of just fine-tuning the soft tissues. Even everything, if everything goes beautiful in the surgery and you've done everything uh, that you need to in the recovery, it's still not a guarantee that the patella will uh, not reluxate. Uh, it's difficult to predict. Every individual dog, the way that they stand on the leg, the pull of the muscle, it may affect the healing patella. So there's somewhere um, around 5% risk that that could happen even if you follow the rules completely, the restrictions. Uh, there, of course, are also the potential for minor complications, bruising, swelling, redness. Not unusual to see any of those things after surgery. Um, we encourage you to call us if, if there are any concerns during the healing, uh, but they typically resolve within a few days. Now, as far as the aftercare, we're looking at two months of restricted activity. It means two months of no running, jumping, playing, no doing stairs, no playing with other dogs as much as possible restricted to a small room with good footing, carpeted surface rather than a slippery floor. For some dogs it means uh, restriction to a large crate, especially a dog that may try to jump at the door and uh, just does not like being locked in an area. Uh, some older, calmer dogs, we can feel more relaxed about letting them walk perhaps a little bit more within a couple of different rooms 
but again we'll, we'll sort out what's best for your pet when we do the consultation but overall it's strict rest the first two weeks in particular we're waiting for the incision to heal it's important to have a cone around the head and an Elizabethan collar so that your pet does not pull out the stitches sutures come out by two weeks and while the first two weeks it's really outside just for brief potty breaks by the two week point we'll actually start doing some slow leash walks nothing for exercise nothing vigorous or fast but for a few minutes at a time several times a day we'll be doing some slow walks outside to encourage the use of the leg um, at a month out we'll increase the level of activity slightly six weeks same thing we'll be upping it a little bit and by the time we hit the eight week point I would hope that the limp is completely gone in uh, many dogs the limp is gone far before that time but it's important that we wait this two month period to allow the scar tissue to start healing and to let the bone start healing and even if your dog is not limping say at two weeks out it's still important to do the two month of restricted activity at the two month point you'll be rechecking with your family veterinarian it's a good idea to have an x-ray taken we want to assess where the implants are make sure the bone is healing before we resume more normal activity and even at eight weeks out while we do lift the activity in the house typically um, I would still not allow running playing and um, doing stairs excessively for another month we're going to transition back to normal over a four week period by the time we hit 12 weeks uh, I would expect that your pet should be normal in most every way.